Good afternoon, folks. I've got a bit of an update for you on the greenhouse. For those of you that are following, you know what we're doing here. I'm going to do a quick explanation for anybody that's new to the channel. We have a 20 by 45 foot greenhouse here in northern Missouri. We have a 95 ton rock heat sink under the greenhouse and we are hoping to be able to grow hardy and or moderately hardy crops all year long in the greenhouse. We are using heat from the sun to charge the thermal mass underneath the greenhouse and are hoping that we can use that thermal mass and the double wall plastic on the greenhouse to keep it above freezing temperatures so that we can grow all year long. We have made the transition from our summer crops to the winter crop with the exception of that mess of tomatoes there that is eventually going to come out and be replaced but everything else is in that we're going to grow and I thought I wanted to show you what you can expect to see this winter as we progress and test this greenhouse. First off, the kale. If you've seen any of our other videos, this is the same kale. Still growing. We're still taking from it every week. It's producing a ton of food for us. We have added some herbs here. We have basil and cilantro. We have chard that we're still growing there. Beyond that, we have a little bit of dill at the end of this row on the right. And in the remainder of that row, and the one here to my left, we have broccoli and cauliflower. Over a little bit more in this third row is cabbage. We have, oh, I don't even remember what variety this is. There's 10 feet of it. I have a little bit of Napa and a purple cabbage that we're going to grow in an open spot here. Actually, nope, next row over because we have just put seeds in for radishes there. As we pull radishes out, we will replenish that through the winter. Now, the tall crops here, to the left, again, these tomatoes on the right are all gonna be coming out. They have been in here since March. They're getting pretty tired. I have been neglecting them for the last month. And they're blocking the light for everything to their left during the day. I'm going to pull those out, put a short crop in, and grow that through the winter. I have enjoyed my tomatoes in here, but I'm not going to grow as many next year. Anyway, to my left, I have suckers from the tomatoes over here that I have started they are rooting and actually have blooms and a few tomatoes on them i want to see how long i can grow a tomato in here i hope that on thanksgiving day i'm able to come out and pick a vine ripe tomato take it in the house and have it for our thanksgiving meal keep watching our videos and you'll get to see how long it goes all right past the tomatoes i have snake gourd. I have two Chinese noodle beans that I learned about from Papa Pepper. I have a red and a green. I have some Malabar spinach in there and I have some snow peas. I have never had the noodle bean before. I really am enjoying it. If eaten raw it has kind of a nutty taste to it which is interesting but after it's cooked that taste is gone. When the bean is mature, even to the point where it is beginning to make seeds, you don't get the string in it. It's not a stringy bean at all. I like it more than the pole beans that I have grown in the past. Thank you, Papa Pepper. All right, in our last row here on the left, we have onions down there. And in this eight foot section here that looks like it's open, we have spinach that's coming up. I have another small section of kale. I'm looking forward to the temperatures dropping and this getting a little bit sweeter. This open section here is going to be more cabbage and more of this celery. I've got some of that started on the table here behind me 
and I'll show that to you. And the last thing we've got here is beets. That group is about ready to come out. I've got a few more feet already started here. As this stuff comes out, I will replace it with more beet seedlings, again, that we hope to produce out here on our seedling table. We have some red and some white. I'm not much of a beet fan. I do really enjoy the beet greens. My parents both like beets, so they will probably get these. And there's the white. Oh, and there's a random Swiss chard in the monk's that I don't know how it got there, but there we go. All right, ready to go in the garden. Well, part of it's going to go in the garden. I have more celery here. This is going to go next to that stalk of celery I already showed you. The dill is for somebody else in their garden. Uh, Miss Dusty, I need a container to put this in for you. And over here is the rest of the cabbage that is going to go into the grow box here this week. We have this table out here in the greenhouse and I hope to do all of my seedling production out here from this point forward. I have grow lights in the basement that'll come out. I do need to run the electricity from one end of the greenhouse to put an outlet down here still. Uh, that should be pretty easy to do. I just have not made it a priority to get done yet. But I'll be doing all of my seedling production out here, able to grow it on the table, turn around and plop it right into the garden. For those of you that don't know, everything in here that you see growing is grown in a mixture of sawdust and sand using the Mitlider method. I didn't mention it earlier, where the tomatoes, the big tomatoes are coming out, I'm probably going to grow collard and maybe some turnip for the greens. I really like the greens. If you have any suggestions on what I should do with that, there's going to be, oh, well, about 10 feet of grow bed that is not currently occupied that I need suggestions to fill it with. I would love to hear something that you enjoy growing in the cold weather that I can try in here. I'm going to try to do an update on the greenhouse every couple of weeks. The weather here is getting cold. We have had freezing temperatures the last two nights, but it's not getting so cold that I need to put the second layer of plastic on the sidewalls yet. I'm probably going to do the northern end sometime this week just to get it up. And that way I can still open the southern end to vent heat during the day when the sun is out. It was 44 degrees for a high yesterday, but I had to open up the greenhouse because with the sun out, we got over 100 degrees in here pretty quick. Thank you for watching. Be sure to look for more videos on the greenhouse in the next few weeks. I look forward to finding out what this thing will do and sharing the results with you. Have a good day.